Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the news of Shirok TV. Today's stories include UN chief calls on World Bank to support Sudan to face COVID-19 pandemic. Al Burhan receives telephone call from Abu Dhabi Crown Prince. Mastercard gets green light to operate in Sudan. United Nations Secretary General Antony Gutters called on the international financial institutions to grant Sudan exceptional support to confront the COVID-19 pandemic after the World Bank's exclusion Sudan from global emergency funds for coronavirus response operations. Taking the opportunity of a UN Security Council video conference meeting on the future of that four peacekeeping mission, the UNAMID, under Secretary General for Political and Peace Building Affairs, Rosemary A. DiCarlo, spoke in his speech about the political and economic challenges that Sudan has been facing alone without any significant economic support to its people. DiCarlo pointed to the protests and political agitations by the supporters of the former regime, the worrisome humanitarian situation with 9.3 people who need assistance as a result of deepening economic crisis and increasing rate of inflation in the country. Secretary of State Michael Pompeo has recommended that the U.S. keep funding World Health Organization programs to fight polio and coronavirus in seven countries a recognition that the group provides key services in some areas, despite President Donald Trump's criticism. State Department officials informed the National Security Council that the WHO is central to the fight against COVID-19 or polio in seven countries, Afghanistan, Egypt, Libya, Pakistan, Sudan, Syria and Turkey, said a person familiar with the discussions. Adhering to the letter of Trump's order from last week, to hold all U.S. funding to the WHO for at least 60 to 90 days, review would therefore be unworkable. In the case of Afghanistan and Pakistan, the programs at stake are fighting polio and coronavirus, while for the five other five, it's only for work on coronavirus. The Federal Minister of Health has announced 39 confirmed cases of COVID-19 and four deaths one of them reported on Wednesday. According to the epidemic reports, all new cases and deaths were recorded in Khartoum state, bringing the total number to 213 and 16 deaths, as well as 17 recoveries. The general Sufi complex has called for using the advisory opinion of temporary suspension of the Friday and congregational prayers due to the coronavirus pandemic. The Sufis said in press statement that according to the directives issued by the concerned scholars, it considers the necessity for suspension of congregational and Friday prayers, calling on the people to pray in their houses until the pandemic is gone. The statement included many Quran verses supporting the fatwa. The head of the Sovereign Council, Lieutenant General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, received a telephone call from the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, the Deputy Commander of the United Arab Emirates Army, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed al Hiyan, congratulating him on the advent of the holy month of Ramadan and wishing the Sudanese people progress and prosperity. Al-Burhan, on his turn, appreciated the UAE official gesture, wishing the UAE and its people peace, stability and prosperity. The two sides also discussed the bilateral cooperation and exchange viewpoints on regional issues. MasterCard Incorporated, the world's second largest payment processor, has obtained permission to operate in Sudan, according to a Sudanese official. The director of the electronic banking services company, EBS, which is affiliated with the Central Bank of Sudan, Omar Omarabi, told Sudan Tribune that the credit card issuer assured them of their willingness to grant Sudanese banks license to work. It is not clear if any Sudanese banks applied for such a license. Omarabi revealed that they recently held a meeting that saw the attendance of about 12 MasterCard representatives as well as the company's regional director based in Kenya and other Dubai-based company officials.
Omarabi noted that the attendees agreed that there would be fruitful cooperation between MasterCard and Sudan after announcing that they had obtained clearance to operate in Sudan and are now able to grant license to Sudanese banks. The Sudanese-Libyan border co-forces have arrested a number of trucks loaded with smuggled goods. The assigned governor of the North State, Mr. Mohammed Al-Hassan Sa'ouri, has visited the co-forces headquarters, emphasizing the government's decision not to allow any kind of economic or security disturbances and will continue to trace any type of corruption. On the other hand, the head of intelligence department of the co-forces, Malaz Hassan, expressed that the mission was accomplished as a result of hard cooperation and close monitoring from the Sudanese-Libyan co-forces. The President of the Republic of South Sudan, Salfa Kermiardet, has sent a condolence cable to the President of the Sovereign Council, Lieutenant General Abdul Fattah al-Burhan, on the death of Mr. Mansour Khalid. He said that the late Dr. Mansour was hoping that all issues of South Sudan would be resolved and that Sudan would remain united, enjoying democracy and justice that everyone is working for, adding that for known reasons the South has seceded. The president of South Sudan pointed out that Dr. Mansour Khalid has given great efforts and was one of those who contributed to the realization of the Comprehensive Peace Agreement, the CPA. He said that the measures taken to combat the corona pandemic prevented the arrival of a delegation from South Sudan to attend the late funeral of Dr. Mansour Khalid, hoping that peace would be achieved in Sudan. And here we remind you with the headlines. The UN chief calls on World Bank to support Sudan to face COVID-19 pandemic. Al-Burhan receives telephone call from Abu Dhabi Crown Prince. MasterCard gets green light to operate in Sudan. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was it. Thank you for following and see you next time.